So welcome. Uh, let me begin by saying that this is an informal gathering. Our session is being recorded, but it will only be broadcast later. So if you don't wish to be recorded, please do switch off your cameras and uh, microphones. Uh, today we have uh, Professor José Manuel Fernández. Uh, I'm very happy to have him uh, with us uh, once more. Um, this is our 10th talk as part of the series on the living memory of cities which we have been organising with uh, London Met. Alongside this series, once a month, there's an advanced study seminar on sacred space entitled Presence, Person, Beauty. That's something we're organising with Father Peter Newby at St Mary's University, um, Twickenham. Our next session will be on the 23rd November. That will be a session with Professor Fabio Barry of Stanford University. Uh, the title of Fabio's talk is uh, why round temples? So that's uh, a Tuesday next week, and uh, all are welcome. Uh, today, as I was uh, saying, we have with us Professor José Manuel Fernández, who will be talking to us about Nova Oueiras. Uh, this is a neighbourhood near Lisbon, and the uh, also the application for UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, Professor José Manuel Fernández and I have known each other since I was his student in uh, Lisbon. Uh, where we had uh, perhaps the richest uh, architectural program within the scope of the arts and humanities uh, with a, a Department of History and Phenomenology of Architecture, which I believe is perhaps unique and, and um, in a school that can trace its history back to the 16th century, making it perhaps uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest uh, in Europe. So that's a, a living tradition really and a tangible experience of the field of architecture that uh, on a more personal levels is really very hard to, to uh, describe. Uh, since then, we've uh, also worked together on um, the conference we were organizing in Lisbon with the Gulbenkian Foundation. And that initiative was also, was also in a sense, a first mover uh, for this uh, current series. Um, uh, today's proceedings will be very simple. Eric will be uh, chairing the session. Professor Zemino Fernandes will do his keynote presentation for about uh, 30 minutes or so uh, in all freedom. And this will be followed by a similar period for questions. So perhaps from London Met, Nick Temple uh, or, or Matthew Barrick uh, might like to uh, start off that, but uh, that's only a suggestion. Uh, meanwhile, a note to thank uh, Joanne Gold, uh, Charlie McIntyre and uh, Nikolina Georgieva, who have been assisting with these sessions at Eric Perry Architects, as well as uh, Duncan McDonald with IT, and our graphics team, in particular Russell Watson and uh, Roma McCook, who have been updating these events on our website and events programme. And uh, I would now give the floor to Matthew. Matthew, you're, you're back now from your retreat. Um, over to you. Thank you very much um, and welcome from uh, London Met, from our Centre for Urban and Built Ecologies, which is our host organisation for, for this event. Um, now for this series of events, we're really excited to be in the second year of this partnership, this collaboration, um, and we are looking forward to taking a long view in the hope that we can host a conference uh, to join uh, with Eric Parry Architects uh, to get uh, a number of the people together who've presented um, and some others uh, to produce uh, an in-person event, um, probably late 2022 or early 2023. We haven't put the package together yet, but you'll all be very much invited to that. Um, so that's just something to think ahead to. After the delays uh, today, I'm just going to hand straight over to Eric to uh, get the party going uh, in terms of this evening's presentation. So thank you very much. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, um, I, I'm very excited because about 10 days ago, uh, you know, we heard from uh, uh, Jose uh, Matos from uh, ARX um, and he cited, I think, very interestingly, an influential book uh, on uh, the Arquitectura Popular in Portugal uh, from the late 50s uh, and how important that uh, that publication uh, has been to succeeding generations of thinkers and, and architects. And uh, so uh, I think in a way that leads us very interestingly into tonight's presentation. Um, and as Josia said, this uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting 
uh, you know, uh, when we were trying to formulate the uh, the the, the Kaluzhsky-Benkian venue, um, and this paper would have been part of that. So, uh, looking forward hugely to tonight. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, and at the end, of course, just to uh, moderate the questions, and and I'm sure they're going to be interesting as well. Well, thanks a lot for your um, invitation to José de Paiva and uh, Eric Perry and uh, all your uh, organization. Well, the, the, this presentation uh, regards the um, residential uh, neighborhood of Nova Oeiras, which is uh, 15 miles from Lisbon, west from Lisbon. We call it uh, just, a, you know, like a private job, the Brno, which is, uh, as you know, the name of a, a famous Czechoslovakian city where the, the house of Ms. van der Rohe stands. BRNO means Bairro Residencial of Nova Oeiras, okay? Um, this neighborhood is a very special one. I have dedicated lots of uh, investigation and works and articles uh, uh, regarding Nova Oeiras uh, information. And in 2015, um, I together with the Oeiras municipality, uh, tried to propose uh, Nova Oeiras uh, into the ind indicative list for the uh, UNESCO World Heritage uh, um, classification, which still didn't wor work on, but it will. Okay, so I will try to, to show some um, historical aspects of the neighborhood, some aspects of its evolution, characteristics, etc. Jose, please, the first uh, image. Okay, um, these the images you are uh, seeing um, uh, were organized to, to support that uh, uh, heritage uh, attempt for the UNESCO system. Um, we call it the urbanization plan for the neighborhood unit of Novo Aires, which was mainly designed and coordinated by architect Luis Cristina da Silva uh, during approximately 20 years. Uh, the first um, design plan was from 1953. Uh, the final plan <clears throat> was from 1962 to 65, with changes in 1974. And it included the collaboration uh, and the creation of the architect uh, Pedro Falcão e Cunha and of the landscape architect uh, Gonçalo Ribeiro Teles. And the uh, actual present day population, it's about 1,500 um, 1, to 2,000 persons. Um, next image, please. Well, the plan is, um, in my regard, very original because it connects um, three uh, type different, three very different typologies, uh, building typologies and spatial typologies. Um, we will speak about that, um, but you can see in this general plan <coughs> view that we have a general area of a garden city um, type of design with different family houses uh, put together, aligned. Then you have a central uh, area, which includes different uh, six towers uh, and uh, three blocks and the central um, cultural and commercial area. This, um, this whole plan was um, designed into a former rural area, uh, which belonged to the famous Quinta Grande, uh, the big manor area of the Marquis of Pombal, which was, was a famous aristocrat and uh, prime minister of Portugal in the uh, 18th century. And it um, really um, uh, allowed the urbanization of the larger area of this quinta, of this uh, farmer area. Um, next, please. Now, this is a photo of the 1980s, with the plan already uh, implemented and built. 
um, it still suffered several changes, as I will speak, to, uh, I will explain to you. But you have clearly the area of the of the Garden City uh, typology. You have the central area with the towers, the blocks, and the the, the central commercial and cultural nucleus. And there is a quotation by Gonzalo Ribertels, the the, the the landscape architect I told you about. Uh, Ribertels is eventually the most qualified and most important landscape architect in Portugal uh, of the 20th century. He passed away last year with 90 years old. Uh, and he, he said about this plan, which was the first plan he did professionally, uh, that the, the, the plan comprehended a vast central area. Uh, with some towers uh, integrating an area where uh, groups of uh, pines and uh, olive olive trees and cork trees uh, were involving an extensive field and walking ways surrounding this field and separating it from the uh, um, denser areas of the trees uh, between the towers there, there was a leisure and and, uh, and free space for the inhabitants and on the top uh, north west part of the of the uh, urbanization it was previewed the building of a church which was uh, our, uh, later on built surrounding this central nucleus of towers and and, and, and blocks and the central nucleus uh, there was an as he called it a ring of family houses uh, following as he said this is a text of the 1950s uh, following the old idea of the garden city and uh, so does incorporating this plan next, next image please well there's a general view of the of the <clears throat> novel area central area and taken in the 1990s in which you can feel if, if you, you can see that uh, the Brno uh, integrates on, on one side uh, a central nucleus following strictly following the model of the Carta 10 of the modern movement um, main theory uh, with uh, the six towers the three blocks and the central um, let's say square for equipment and uh, commercial uh, purposes um, and evolved by green spaces with trees and plantations and so on. Also, also it is served by uh, several pedestrian walkways and uh, traffic uh, motorways. Okay, next, please. Um, so, the main originality of this plan is, from my point of view, it's eclectic, eclectic um, um, thought, is eclectic purpose. As as you as you know, eventually, Portuguese architecture in, is very much connected with that idea of eclecticism, of gathering different uh, language aspects of different cultural movements, which has to do with the peripheral characteristic of Portugal uh, regarding the central uh, uh, cultural areas of, of Europe. And so it is it is uh, interesting that the urbanists and the architects and the landscape architects of this plan that uh, together contributed to the, the, the general design of it uh, included included the three main uh, um, aspects of the most important urbanistic cultural movements of the first part of the 20th century let's say the garden city uh, system the modern movement, the uh, uh, green area with towers and blocks system, and connecting to each other, the neighborhood unit principles, which Clarence Perry uh, developed in New York and other American cities. So, what I think it is specifically um, original and turns it very interesting for us, uh, the, the, the neighborhood unit of Novo Irish is besides being a private enterprise private intervention which is also very original uh, within portuguese culture urbanistic culture 
most um, interventions in Portugal are from uh, the state and the municipal uh, public uh, areas. This is a, a private intervention made by, you know, um, uh, investors, capitalists that wanted to earn money about, uh, with this plan, but had the preoccupation in the, in the 1950s and 60s to invite excellent architects, urbanists and landscape architects to be able to design an exceptional uh, neighborhood uh, unit. And they, they, they were able to, to really do it, in my opinion. Um, you don't have in Europe and in the United States and other places, um, as, as far as I know, a plan, a single plan that gathers the three main um, architectural and urbanistic movements of the uh, first part of the 20th century together in a coherent system. Whether you have garden city models, whether you have uh, Carta 10 and modern movement models and, and systems, or neighborhood units, you don't have the three of them connect interconnected in the same plan. And that is, uh, on my point of view, the, the the main originality and the terms of where is very interesting on this point of view. Well, the red line in this um, aerial photo, which is, was taken in the 2000s, um, defines the, 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 the limits of the plan, because from 2000 on, the municipality uh, took over the, 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 the issue of uh, renewing, um, com making a conservation in, uh, integrating system, a uh, project system um, in which I participate. Okay, next image. Well, this is uh, an aerial view with um, the building of the towers already accomplished, uh, the, the building of the three blocks and the central uh, square, modern square, uh, approximately at the center of the image and a part of the garden city system of uh, um, family houses uh, already uh, achieved. Okay, next. So one, one aspect of this uh, Brno is that it um, it turns very coherent and balanced the, 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 the presence of landscape, uh, of a landscape project, of an urbanistic uh, urban design project and of a different system of architectural projects. It balances uh, at the same time the idea of landscape with the green areas, of course, commanding the system. The, the, the idea of the modern uh, collective housing with towers and blocks and so, and also the ring, the ring, the uh, involving ring with the, the family houses uh, system. So the, it expresses somehow those important urbanistic movements of the 20th century into the same, uh, as I, I told you, coherent system. Next, please. And this image is very interesting uh, for me, very, very, let's say, important. It's precisely architect uh, Ribertels at the center of the image, explaining in a guiding visit to the inhabitants of Novo Eiras uh, the, 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 the main characteristics of the, of the general plan. He was uh, able to, 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 to design 20, 40 years ago. Okay. He was, um, he, visited the, the, we invited him to visit uh, this area several times in a pedagogic and uh, didactic point of view. And he always was uh, very collaborative and, uh, um, you know, interesting, very interesting in what he said to, to us and to the population. Next, please. Well, that central nucleus of Novo Eires, um, expresses um, very specific intentions of the landscape design. One of the main intentions is that kind of continuous line of pine trees, olive trees, cork trees, Mediterranean species, um, defining a central uh, open area of fields, uh, houses, blocks, towers, etc. 
we are, we are were able to you know preserve this intention we uh, replace the the, the, the the all the trees but continuously try to uh, nowadays to maintain this idea of a general ring of trees uh, embracing and protecting the central uh, free nucleus um, with the main uh, collective housing buildings. Also, it is important that a square, approximately, approximately square, a square, um, modern square uh, intervention, uh, which was implanted, uh, surrounded by the towers and by the blocks, and houses most of the stores and commercial um, facilities of this uh, novo era's nucleus. Uh, because for me that that central uh, rectangular square or uh, squares is is um, a recreation a reinvention of the idea of you know acropolis forum agora etc uh, um, redesigned and reinvented in modern terms we shall see it uh, more detailly next next please So we are speaking about, you know, a planned landscape, a modern landscape uh, with ecological uh, preoccupations and intentions um, uh, using the traditional uh, Mediterranean South Europe uh, uh, characteristic trees, uh, uh, spines and, and olive uh, trees and cork trees. Etc. Also, there is an, an important issue, which is the 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 Bernou, um, urbanized that part of the uh, farm of the Marquis of Pombal of the 18th century, but in a, a clear and uh, a comprehensive and let's say intelligent connection with the the central nucleus of uh, medieval Oeiras, with the installation of the of the. 18th century palace of Marquis of Pombal, uh, with other uh, important uh, areas for the, uh, the, the, the the use of the state as the agronomical uh, station area. In the in the, the photo on the on your right side, you can see just on the on the down line some family houses belonging to the plan, to Novo Irish plan, and defining the, the limit the uh, eastern limit of it and as you can see it is directly connected by a street with the the, the park of the, the marquis of pombal uh, palace installation and next to the palace you have the medieval and modern nucleus of white so there is a certain um, um, urban fabric continuity uh, between novel Oeiras modern pro proposal and the 18th century Renaissance and Baroque installation of the palace and gardens, and the medieval and the pre medieval uh, nucleus of Wales. And this connection, this um, open and, and comprehensive, intelligent connection of the of Wales fabric with the other urban fabrics, uh, the surroundings, is essential to uh, emphasize its uh, quality. Next, please. So there is this uh, important idea of continuity, which is, of course, a cultural continuity and also um, urbanistic uh, landscape and architectural uh, continuity. Well, this was the, the, the dossier to organize the general information, uh, emphasizing the main qualities of the neighborhood unit of uh, Novo Eiras uh, in order to, to, to serve the, the idea of the UNESCO um, qualification. So here we have some uh, some points which were observed as the uh, Novo Eiras is the, the testimony of important modern cultural movements influence. Um, the, the point four um, explains that it's an exceptional example of a typology of building, of a typology of uh, landscape. Uh, next, please. Um, we invited uh, Professor uh, Roberto Goicolea Prado from the University of Alcalá in Madrid to visit and to analyze the urbanistic aspects of Novo Eiras 
and he also uh, emphasized in his language in his uh, spanish language the um, qualities that that he saw in Novoeres. he said that Bruno is sin duda una obra paradigmática del conjunto residencial moderno es una propuesta que rompe con las formas tradicionales de entender y configurar la ciudad proponiendo nuevas maneras de organizar el espacio habitable frente a la ciudad histórica y también eh, a las propuestas urbanas de la época eh, el Bruno se caracteriza por un urbanismo generoso y creativo y, res y respira optimismo so synthesizing he explains the modern idea of the novo Irish neighborhood unit facing the historical city and the historical area surrounding it and the, the the characteristics of a generous and creative modern urbanism urbanism and he says that it embraces uh, optimism which is of course a general characteristic of the 1950s and 60s urbanizations next please And indeed, you have um, a model of that central uh, um, rectangular square, that public square, um, which was, you know, created and rethought as a modern contribution to, you know, rethink the idea of a public square, of a central, of a central space within the Novoeiro neighborhood. So it's characteristically modern asymmetrical composing different rectangular um, habitation on commercial blocks and with a very interesting uh, covered gallery which replaces the idea of arcades and the idea of uh, uh, traditional and classic arcades uh, with a, a gallery uh, concrete built system that is uh, physically separated from the the habitation on commercial blocks as you can see in the model next please also of course this is not accessible to 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 motor cars to the, the traffic general traffic it is um let's say um characteristic characteristically modern area uh which is uh, you know uh, protected from the traffic well on the, one of the things we have to do in these uh, dossiers from the for the unesco heritage is to compare our uh, case study to other important uh, case studies and namely to other important classified unesco classified uh, neighborhoods and so we compared it with the the housing estates of uh, bruno taut the the famous uh, brits uh, organization uh, the white city of tel aviv in israel these were, were classified in uh, 2008 in the case of Berlin, uh, modern urbanizations, and 2003 in the case of Tel Aviv, white city uh, blocks. Uh, the difference is very clear. In the modernist uh, headquarters of Berlin, you have exclusively uh, continuous housing, collective, collective housing blocks and collective uh, housing uh, squares and, and spaces. You don't have a uh, family house garden city in, inserted in it or surrounding it, and you don't have the neighborhood unit idea uh, also inserted in it. Next, please. Another important uh, comparative uh, um, um neighborhood of course is brasilia the the capitals the federal capital city of brazil uh, which has different uh, what what they call in portuguese super quadras uh, super neighborhood units but of course again in the case of brasilia the the neighborhood units of brasilia exclusively include and uh, and uh, build a family house collective family house blocks okay next please another important comparison with uh, unesco classified 
uh, nucleus is of course the Mexico uh, University uh, city within the Mexico City, uh, capital city of, of Mexico. But of course, in the case of the Mexico City uh, compound, you only have uh, equipment, facilities, uh, and collective spaces. You don't have housing, and uh, well, whether they are collective or or or, uh, or family houses. Okay, next. Well, we also compared with um, other. Um, Neighbors, neighborhood units which were not classified by UNESCO, but had an importance, uh, were an important contribution to these um, typologies, to, to this type of uh, urban fabrics, etc. So we referred to Roehampton in Alton West, uh, London, and uh, New Zagreb, Novi Zagreb uh, in uh, the former Yugoslavia territory interesting and qualified urban uh, modern urban experiences but again only including um, collective uh, housing next please and of course we have the connection with the thank you uh, the, the connection with the the main garden city and the uh, um, historically important garden cities as Letchworth, uh, Redburn complex in the United States, uh, Ellerhau in Germany, etc. Which, of course, only included the garden city typology and not the modern movement blocks and tower system and green spaces uh, system. Again, uh, next, please. So to, to, to make a synthesis, a clear synthesis of Novo Eirish neighborhood unit, for me, it has two important um, qualities. The first general quality is the um, delicate and uh, shift balance between landscape uh, issues, uh, urbanistic and urban design issues and architectural issues. There is a a delicate balance between and connect these uh, three, this triangular uh, system, which um, turns out to be very efficient, very uh, uh, attractive to live in. And the second aspect, which I, I told you about, is that such balance and quality is possible because of the eclectic purpose, the eclectic approach that uh, the architects and the landscape architects that were uh, the authors of this plan uh, intended to develop. Connecting and then also balancing the part of the garden city, the part of the modern movement blocks and, and tower system, and the central core um, expressing and organizing the idea of, uh, of a neighborhood unit uh, of the 1920s and 30s. Uh, this, this whole system turned out to be very attractive and it is still nowadays very attractive um, because in, in my point of view, it is very open, open-minded to different transformations and different evolutions of the urban fabric. Next, please. Well, of course, the municipality um, in the last 20 years, let's say, with a general uh, renewal and uh, rehabilitation plan, which I developed with my uh, uh, companion, uh, Maria de Lourdes Janeiro, architect, uh, and together with the, the services of the municipality, we were, we were able to, um, to present um, a new phase for Novo Eres, which was the renewal and the re rehabilitation of the green areas, of the public spaces, of the private houses, private blocks and towers, etc. In an organized and sequential uh, system, which was implemented since the early 2000s until nowadays with different interventions, of course, <clears throat> mainly in the, into the public spaces, which are most of them uh, green areas. Next, please. 
of course, as you notice, the architecture is very, you know, Corbusian in its um, conception, general conception. Uh, here we have a general view of those modern gallery system into the, the main square, central square of the Novo Eres neighborhood. Also, the, the, the type of trees of Mediterranean and Southern Europe typology of trees. Next, please. And of course, we you organized um, a, a new system for the promotion of or the transformation and the protection of these of these neighborhood units. Uh, it was uh, um, centralized in the municipality of Wairish, um services. Uh, it was uh, based on a general uh, regu regulation, which was approved in our uh, Diario da República official uh, paper, uh, with the characteristics, the necessary uh, and the allowed transformation possibilities in architectural and urbanistic terms. Next, please. So with this leading for management and regulation system, we were able to transform, gradually transform a, um, a built reality, which was, let's say, dec decadent and uh, very, very much needed of transformation. As you can see in the image on the, on the left side, the, 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 the public galleries on the central square were abandoned. The light system, the lightning system was completely destroyed and it was rebuilt, um, delicately rebuilt and paved. Uh, regarding the blocks, some of the blocks were completely uh, needed of transformation and renewal, as you can see in the image on the left uh, corner. Uh, this is uh, on on the on the right side. The image of the same block after the 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 modernization and painting and the renewal of the block, which was notice uh, taken over by the uh, owners, because the municipality cannot. Uh, Make an intervention in, in the intervention into the, the private spaces, but it can, you know, influence, uh, um, uh, motivate that same intervention. Next, please. Of course, uh, for this to be possible, the, the municipality created a local cabinet of support to the works, to the projects, to the transformation, uh, whether by private or by public municip municipal uh, initiative. Uh, that is the Galnov, the name of the cabinet, cabinet for local intervention if in Novo Eires, uh, with an annual uh, prize for the best interventions by private or public uh, owners, which is the Renov, the prize for rehabilitation of Novo Eires which has been attributed since 2007, let's say, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, 11 times, 11 prizes were already attributed. Next, please. Well, we could speak a lot about this uh, in detailed aspects, but you can see, <clears throat> generally speaking, the quality of the urban design, the quality of the landscape design and the quality of the architectural design of the buildings, whether they are blocks or towers or family, family houses. Uh, we also have some modern um, additions uh, that included uh, works of art uh, by local artists, as the, the, the photo shown on the, on the left side of the image, which was designed by the sculptor Carlos Nogueira, a uh, resident of the Novo Eres neighborhood, uh, using exclusively using marble uh, and rectangular elements of the southern area of Portugal. Next, please. I think we are reaching the end. Of course, this is possible because of the intervention of the municip municipality, because of the local uh, cabinet of support to the works, because of the prize, and mostly because of the uh, community participation. 
Mm -hmm. There is an association of uh, local uh, residents which cooperates uh, com continuously with the local municipal cabinet. And this, this, this um, greed of intentions, this greed of uh, institutions, this greed of uh, interventions allows altogether um, the present and the, the good present, the good future of Novoeiras. I think it's the last image, not sure what. Okay, thank you so much. Indeed, thank, thank you so much. It's really, uh, very interesting. I have myself some uh, questions to make in due course, but could I ask others to, um, to start? Matthew, um, uh, yeah, I'm happy to start. Please, um, I, I, I suppose I was um, my um, my immediate. I'm sorry, I don't hear you. We've lost you, Matthew. Sorry, yeah, yeah there. You used the you talked about the eclectic uh, character several times mm -hmm. of the architecture, and I found this term very interesting. Um, I think when one's talking about these um, examples of um, uh, modernist estates like the Bruno Taut in Berlin and, and so mm -hmm. on, uh, what you what what you look for is those resonances with a, a kind of a universal international language, which speaks to kind of two or three conversations, four or five conversations, mostly across Europe, which, if you like, is anything but eclectic. It's quite universal. Um, but in this context, you talked about uh, the eclecticism of the project as something that made it very distinctive and important. Um, and uh, a week ago, we were we were talking quite a lot about this exchange between an understanding of modernity um, and tradition uh, in terms of uh, local um, nuances or variations on uh, the modern language that may take account of uh, often quite rustic traditions or uh, sensitivity to material and so forth. So I'm interested to think about how that navigation between, if you like, the dialogue between modernist principles and regional or and traditional sensitivities mm -hmm. and yes. um, sympathies might happen. Could you say a bit more about what the eclectic dimension of this particular example? Yes, of course, of course. Well, excellent question. Look, um, the, the eclectic um, characteristics of Novo Eiras, uh, on my point of view, are explained by being a private intervention. S to start with, by being a private intervention. Because, you know, private, uh, a private enterprise in the 1950s and 60s in Portugal, in Europe, in Lisbon, were not uh, radically modern. By definition, they could not be radically modern. They were not interested in being radically modern. On the other hand, they, they were interested in serving um, luxurious family houses, uh, middle class uh, apartments in blocks and towers, uh, you know, different grades and different levels of an uh, habitation units serving the whole general population uh, and attracting the, the you know, the buyers and uh, for, for that reason. Secondly, the, the idea of eclecticism is the idea of these architects and urbanists and landscape architects. They have a, let's say, they had um, a posture, a, a presence, a conceptual presence, eclectic to start with. They understood that connecting the different worlds of the garden city, of the neighborhood unit principles, of the Carta 10 modern movement uh, principles in the same planned compound, in the same system, in the same urban fabric, would be um, um, to enrich, to emphasize, to qualify the whole system and the whole result. So eclecticism in the, on, on, exists, uh, on my point of view, exists on, on both sides. The investor's idea 
and the uh, creative uh, architect's idea. Finally, the result is um, comprehensive and interesting. You have, of course, uh, the upper class families in the in the family houses still today. New upper class members, new uh, youngsters, new children. So you have the middle class, mid 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 class. You have even poor middle mid, middle class representatives in the same urban space in the same squares, streets, pedestrian lines, stores, etc. And that is, a, as you know better than I, a fundamental issue of a qualified urban fabric. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas, uh, Yeah, I really enjoyed your, your lecture. And it, it made me ponder and think about um, a lot of post-war housing schemes in different parts of Europe and in one sense, it reminded me a little bit of Harlow Town, uh, or just one element of it would seem to me kind of interesting. But I, I was kind of, I'm interested in the configuration of it. And if we talk about eclecticism, because I think Matthew's point, I think is, is, a, is absolutely right. There seems to be lots of elements of what are described as mainstream modernism in, in many different areas. And, and of course, the, the residents of Le Corbusier, but it's the combination of these things the way with you know, the way in which it's laid out in this very distinctive manner and i'm just kind of interested in the the choice the decision making if you like that underpin the project particularly the uh location of the of the tower blocks that serve as kind of um a, a kind of perimeter um um registers if you like of the main central area the main cultural commercial area you describe which set which sit in within the boundary, if you like, of the central area outside mm, yes. Uh, yes. the residential, the more affluent residential housing that, that that sit across the road. So my sense is that looking at it just as a plan form and from what you say about it, what emerged over the years, the dereliction and decline of the central area probably did happen in the residential areas outside, which probably thrived. Um, that there was a sense in which there was a sort of divide between the two parts over time. Would, would that be an accurate description? <laughs> it's it's a good question, but it's <clears throat> difficult to answer. Um, look, there is a, a moment in the Novo Eres uh, historical evolution, which has to do with the Portuguese revolution of 1974. Um, most private companies, you know, Failed. Uh, they sold. They sold uh, everything they had. They ran away from the from the places, and that happened to the Sociedad uh, de Nova Oeiras. They sold the things. They sold public spaces. They sold everything. They ran away, and the 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 the, the, dec the decadence started then. Decadence of public spaces. Uh, the decadence of you know. It has to be treated, it has to be accompanied, the trees, the houses, everything. Uh, you ask if there is, a, there is a gap, there is a frontier between the family, the, the, the modern movement central area and the family houses um, ring, let's say. No, there isn't. That never happened. Um, there is a street that connects on one side uh, on the on the outside in the 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 family houses walls and facades and on the inner side the trees and the blocks and the and the and the, and the towers but that, that is an um, open connection open space connection and the green space again in the very corbusian modern movement style the green area the green elements the trees the bushes the, are the responsible for that uh, open connection, open and, and positive connection and uh, attractive connection. Mm -hmm. During the pandemia in, in the last year, uh, you know, in Portugal, the gardens were closed, public gardens were closed to the public. And so most of the families uh, uh, invaded, let's say the word, Nova Oeiras, because it was a public garden also. It, 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 it was not possible to close it. You see, it had no walls, it had no no doors, 
that was a very fantastic um, transitional uh, um, idea of the utility and the, the quality of those spaces. I enjoyed very much to see in that emergency period the quality of these spaces. Um, of course, the towers. The towers have 10, 10 floors, 10 levels. They were um, the first uh, uh, transformation not regarding the general uh, urbanization plan of the Costa do Sol, of the coastal area of Cascais to Lisbon, because the, that plan of the 1930s uh, imposed only the maximum of four levels high. And these towers were responsible for the introduction of modern movement idea of towers, of the Corbusian idea of the towers. And so they, they, they were very careful in introducing those uh, um, towered elements. They had to be beautiful. They had to be, you know, triangular to open to, to, to the, the movement of, of the sun. They were very qualified in, in terms of element, materials and spaces. They were very, very far away from each other. If you are within one of the towers, you don't see the neighbors of the other tower. It's too far away. And that is a, a fantastic um, um, concretization of the Corbusier's idea of the, you know, the La Ville Radieuse and so on. So there are lots of, um, that doesn't exist in any other Portuguese space and most of the international spaces with, with towers, of urbanized with towers. You don't have the towers are too, too <clears throat> next to, to each other, too, too near to each other, and that is not uh, that that does not express qu urban quality. So in in novo areas, you have the the possibility to see, to to feel, to live <laughs> several utopian modern movement uh, feelings, ideas, concepts, which is fantastic, of course. Thank you. Um, other other questions, please. Well, perhaps I, I could say something, Eric. Um, please, I was, as I, I saw your presentation, which I very much appreciated. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, struck me was the the image of uh, architect uh, Gonçalo Rivertels explaining uh, the concept behind uh, uh, his, his contribution of always and I was wondering if you might know what what his approach was I mean what 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 were the different points that were most salient about uh, his approach and that he would then um, uh, present to people as as the key to understand what was there Yes, in that um, small text that I tried to translate to you by Gonzalo Ribertelz of the 1950s, when he conceived and designed the landscape areas of Novo Eiras, he clearly expressed his idea of Novo Eiras. And his idea of Novo Eiras was a green area uh, with a um, comprehensive uh, system of, t of uh, trees and bushes and um, Mediterranean species that organized the, the urban public and built spaces, the towers, the and there was still the, 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 the ring with, the, with, the, with the, the, the garden city remains, but that was not so interesting for him. The main thing was the, the modern part. Uh, and in that modern area, the green area was commanding the urbanization, the landscape and the architecture. And that's, that is really true. That is uh, uh, an achievement, and it it still works today, in, in spite of the different uh, transformation. That there was a general field um, in the central area, which was not possible to 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 to, to organize to produce, and the tennis court, different tennis courts were uh, allowed to to fulfill the, that space, which was a very you know Anglo-Saxon open space Hyde Park style area which was not, uh, you know, Portuguese, or it was not possible to build in Portugal. You had not the water, the rain, yes. the, you know. So in spite of the, all those changes, the idea of Ribeiro Tells 
the green areas commanding the the the, the urbanization and the landscape and the architectural areas was the, the the leading idea in that purpose he was the main author of the of the urban of novo mm, yes. also I, I i had this the 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 the, the master the the main professor of Ribertels was uh, Professor Caldeira Cabral, uh, which, <laughs> very interestingly, uh, took the uh, agronomy course in Port in Lisbon, but went to Germany in the 1930s, to Germany in the 1930s, to uh, follow the main and the most important important landscape course, academic course that existed in Europe and in the world, which was uh, during the Nazi regime. And that was the German tradition of uh, landscape gardening and landscape architecture. So that um, that model was imported by Caldera Cabral uh, to, to Portugal and, and, and Lisbon. And uh, Ribertelge was uh, learning into that system. Mm. And this idea of the of the landscape uh, traditionally Germany uh, interpretation uh, is, is fundamental to understand novel areas also. The idea of the connection with nature and so on. It's not just, it just doesn't end in the modern movement ideas. It's much more than that. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I, I was very interested in this. Uh, there's a kind of very interesting tension between uh, the collaborative instinct and the individual instinct in the Portuguese tradition, you know, I think I think of this as a very good example. Um, and indeed, uh, just moving, a, a, you know, a, 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 a decade or two later to the uh, the Calus Gulbenkian Center itself and the relationship between landscape and architecture, uh, both radical and at the same time you know, uh, rooted in uh, a very clear tradition. So I think this is, I mean, there are plenty of comparisons of past. Yes, yes, yes. In, that example Europe. is excellent, yes. But this is this is a synthesis which is very particular to Portugal, if I may say so. Yes, uh, yes, you're right. Well, in a certain way, the Gulbenkian Foundation complex with the buildings and the, the landscape items and spaces, um, are the, the 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 continuation, the pursuit, the the, the development, and the, a more perfect result than Novo Eres. Of course, with another program, with another system, but mm. it's at the it's it's again Gonzalo Ribertels designing and creating it, and the, you expressed very well, Eric, the the idea of a balance between, a, let's say, a tradition, a rural space, and a very modern and and a, uh, sophisticated urban system. It's yeah, that, I think that it, balance is real. It's achieved. I think it's, I think it's thrilling. Um, I, I think really so. Um, I, I can see a hand up. Can I ask? Um, I, it's uh, the hand is anonymous, <laughs> so I don't know if somebody else can. Jose, Jose, can you can you pinpoint that? Uh, raised hand? Uh, yes, I can see Luisa Gomes Mati Costa. Oh, can we can we ask, please? Then, please. Uh, yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Thank you, Professor. Yes. Muito obrigada pela apresentação. De nada. Uh, I, was just, <laughs> I was just curious about, uh, because this is a master plan that contains various typologies, if there was, well, obviously, when it was designed, it was in mind upper classes, middle and probably social housing um, and allocating the different typologies to the different classes. But I was wondering if now, more recently, with the new populations that have that are living in those dwellings, if there is a sense of preference for tower blocks, uh, familiar dwellings or anything that is exclusively related to the quality of the space or specifically to the different typologies, uh, tall buildings, views, obviously some, some issues and accessibilities or the privacy of uh, a familiar dwelling. You, can you um, oh. 
explain better your your question you if the new uh, population uh, feels I was this wondering place. if um, a if you in your perspective or even if the residents express a preference for the different typologies either a tower block or a residential um, dwelling yes um, yes again it's an open it's an open system um, a house one of those family houses a second hand house of course nowadays costs uh, 1 million euros more or less in the mid in the, in the medium 1 million 1 million and a half uh, 800,000 uh, one of the problems of our intervention of the last 20 years connected with the municipality is that the prices went up because of the, of the evolution of the positive evolution of pres preservation new spaces new new areas etc but you cannot you know avoid it um but another family with uh, less resources is easily attracted by for instance the towers the towers are um, excellently built uh, they were built in 1961 to 69 in concrete in a complete system with you know pillars beams and uh, uh, concrete surfaces which does not happens in the blocks the blocks st still have um, uh, structural walls in brick because in 1958 and 1959 the the the, the, the portugal regulation for concrete systems was not so modern hmm? And they allow them they allow the mixed system. So in those blocks you have pillars, but you don't you don't, you have pillars on the facades, on both facades, east and east and west, but you don't have pillars inside the, the, the spaces. You have structural thick walls, which is very um <laughs> eclectic. Yeah, exactly. In a bad sense, because some new families, you know regard the wall they they try to open the space of the living room connecting it with the with the other room and if they <laughs> turn off the wall everything falls no anyway to answer you you have different um typologies of space to different typologies of families and families that visit the space that are interested in buying a house in Novo Eiras feel that um, open possibility. Yeah. You even have, let's say, a poor class or a lower class area. Uh, one of the towers, most of the towers, six, five of the towers have, I think, around 30 apartments on the, on the global. But one of the towers has 50 because it's the social housing tower you know the apartments are much smaller um, you know and the, that possibility to choose is is fantastic also you, you have excellent architecture uh, uh, in the family houses you have excellent in, today i went to visit a house which was built uh, in 1966 uh, which belonged to a very famous uh, Portuguese politician. I'm, I'm not going to, to say his name, but he was very, very important in Portuguese democracy. He lived in Africa. He came back to Portugal after the independence of the African Portuguese colonies. And he occupied that fantastic house with African wood elements. Mm. Doors, uh, grids, everything in, in you know African eternal wood <laughs> materials, and to visit that that house, fifty years later, with the intact house uh, doors and windows and elements of protection is a privilege, and that is just an example. You have there uh, houses by Vitor Pala, uh, Conceição Silva, the best architects of the 1960s. It was very, you know, chic to, to design in Novo Eiras during the, the 1960s. Also, some of the enterprise of the investment of the 
main investors in Novo Eiras, were connected with the colonial Africa, colonial Portuguese Africa. Eventually, part of the money that was um, necessary to build Novo Eiras came from uh, African colonial uh, structures, Portuguese structures, hmm? uh, drained by Portuguese private investors. That, that is just a possibility. I did not study it. Uh, but it has to do with the real Portugal of the 1960s and 70s, which was a colonial power, which lived, you know, attracting and importing uh, African fantastic woods to build these, these, these houses. And at the same time, of course, Portuguese traditional industry and mater Portuguese materials. So eclectic always, I mean, everything. Hail for eclecticism. The, uh, in fact, as we as, as we speak of this in more detail, it is very interesting to compare it with uh, a housing estate, which I happen to live on just around the corner, called the Golden Lane, which likewise has an extremely interesting mix of, you know, a tower block and mid-rise buildings. But mm -hmm. interestingly, uh, Ch Chamberlain, Powell and Bond, the architects, were, were decidedly anti-Garden City. I mean, we are in in the middle of a city, but they 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 railed against the Garden City. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and indeed, it, this is that is an estate that has load bearing walls. It's the same sort of. It's 1952 or something. The the competition, or even a slightly earlier. But um, you know, it uh, it has load bearing walls for the mid rise, and as you say, a much more Caboisian idea for the for the for the tall building so there are lots of similarities actually in in an interesting comparative way to add to your list mm -hmm. of comparisons i believe yes well uh, the, the, the 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 at at the first glance strange uh, ambience of novo Eres is caused by the presence of the family housing belt or or, or ring yeah that's it is it is um, Ribeiro Teles tolerated it, but he, al he also said in the 1950s, this is the old idea of the Garden City, okay, the private owners want to build, but it's, it's not modern, it's mm. pre-modern, but pre -modern. we tolerate it. In fact, the Garden City idea mm. is contradictory to the modern movement idea. Yeah. And that contradiction is uh, fantastic because it is a crea a creative of, of urban life in Novo Eiras. Yeah. The difference between the family house uh, blocks and systems and grid and, and the fabric and the modern movement towers and blocks fabric areas is very, very clear, but very, very um, pleasant to use and to feel and to, to experience. But you don't have it. You, you, I only found, I, I did lots of investigations about it. I, I only found, uh, I think, a small neighborhood in Reykjavik, in Iceland, <laughs> Very well, which included facilities and family houses and modern uh, blocks and towers, but that is just, just as you know, very small and not not so interesting nucleus. Everything else is whether public, relative housing, or garden city system. Or just you know facilities and, and equipment areas. So gathering it in a coherent system is um, a special thing, in my point of view. Thank you. Are there other questions? Uh, I'm certainly intrigued by um, you know other um, enterprises in terms of development that perhaps are, are more state inter interventions like those in Cuba and whether there's any uh, kind of connections but I that's possibly too wide ranging for this evening. In Cuba uh, what I remember in, in Havana and Santiago uh, which I visited some decades ago uh, is, is the, the, the collective housing system imported by imported from uh, from east germany the prefabricated yeah. system and so they don't so, have by definition 
uh, ideological, uh, uh, their ideological system, they don't have family houses urbanizations, yeah. new family houses urbanizations. That is uh, uh, impossible. Oh. Okay. And interesting with Brazil. So, any other questions, please? I think I think uh, that was really so stimulating and interesting. Um, I, uh, I I also think the the sort of connection of continuity with the estate uh, is something that would provide another very interesting line of uh, of research for another occasion. Um, just, and, must just refer that you have a publication of 2015, ah, which yeah. is uh, bilingual, Portuguese and English, the book of Novo Eiras, the Novo Eiras book, and that you can buy it if you come to, to Portugal. <laughs> okay. It has every information regarding the plan, the um, architectural elements, the history of the plan, etc. etc. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I think, regrettably, we'll call it to an uh, end, but a fascinating evening. Thank you. Thank and you so much. And meeting in person again. You know, that's that's really the next step, we hope. Okay, next, you come to Portugal, I'll, uh, I'll go with you to Novo Eres to visit it. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Thank thanks you. a lot for the invitation. <laughs> Excellent well. experience. See you, Eric. See you, Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.